Hi, welcome to The A-List. I'm Mam and Nadia, and with me today, we have a special guest from US 99. It's Drew Walker, a DJ for US 99. Drew, welcome to The A-List. Thanks for having me, man. No problem. And uh, we're going to start off in your early years, so my first question is, well, what, what did you grow up listening to? I grew up listening to everything, but I remember specifically listening to a Top 40 station uh, in Lafayette, Indiana, W-A-Z-Y, and, you know, it was Top 40 music, so kind of like KISS FM now or B96, uh, you know, aimed at kids in high school and listening to the morning show and trying to call in and win contest or be caller number nine. And uh, I remember really enjoying the fact that some guy was in some studio far away, but he was, you know, when I was getting ready for school, he's on my bedroom radio or in the bathroom or on the way to school in the car. And I, I really love the uh, immediacy and the intimacy of radio and so I, I pretty much listen to that station all the time nonstop. Okay and now uh, was this an inspiration for you or did you have another inspiration for wanting to go into radio? I don't think at the time when I was listening that I knew that I wanted to go into radio I know I really enjoyed it and uh, you know there's a term for people who work in radio sometimes called radio geeks where are you you know, just like a, a car geek or a car buff or someone who's really into cars and the parts and putting it together and making it all work. With radio, I loved everything about it. The contests, the personalities, uh, the fact that you could be talking to hundreds of thousands of people at the same time, even though I'm talking to you in your house and I'm talking to Danny in his car and I'm talking to John at home. Mm -hmm. You know, all the different scenarios. But I don't think I really knew that I wanted to do it. I just knew that I really liked it. And uh, so I tried to imitate it all the time at home mm -hmm. and, uh, and really just tried to get into it. But I don't, you know, when you're nine years old, I, yeah. I don't really think you're thinking of, man, this is what I'm going to do when I grow up. Or at least for me, it wasn't like that. Okay. And so now when we move on to your education now, when you were in, say, grade school or high school, did you think you'd go into radio or did you have your sight on another career? No. I mean, I... Uh, I, I knew that I was good in math and I knew that I was good in English, but uh, the radio, it didn't, it didn't really come up as a, oh, this might be a career that mm -hmm. I could work in because uh, I guess typically people in radio do not make, or the impression is that they are not able to make a living doing that unless you're in a full-time position in a large market. And so there aren't a lot of career I guess, what's the right word? In high school, there aren't a lot of people pushing you to say, mm -hmm. hey, have you considered radio on TV? Like, obviously, it's different here at RB because you have yeah. your own television channel and you got your own radio station. But at the high school I went to, you know, I graduated with 108 people in a really small school and there was no TV program, no radio program. So the opportunities or even the possibility of doing that w wasn't there. Okay, so speaking of high school, what high school did you go to? I went to West Lafayette senior high school in West Lafayette, Indiana, which is where uh, Purdue University is. Okay, and then moving on from high school, you went to college. I went I to college at Indiana University. And well, what did you study there? Actually? I actually studied accounting and finance. Oh, so Completely you, different from radio. Yeah, so you're thinking about going into uh, business. Yes. Now, really, when, when did the radio strike you as something you'd want to go in? Because you were in business, which is totally different subject. Totally different, and graduated from college and moved here to Chicago and started with a public accounting firm. And I knew that I really liked radio and I wanted to be a part of it and I knew all about Chicago radio and I ended up just contacting a small AM station in the north suburbs and just said, I would love to learn whatever I could. I will be your intern. I will do whatever you want. You don't have to pay me. Just let me come in and soak it all in. I will be your sponge. And by some miracle or you know, the, some guy had quit a week before, they're like, well, actually, we need somebody on Saturday afternoons. And so I started in and I worked for free and I just started at the very, very bottom and worked my way up from there. Okay, so then you worked your way up to the top. And was that kind of like, were you proud of yourself when that you started in a totally different thing and now you, it seems you found your passion, kind of like your niche. Is that kind of what you felt after you started from the bottom and now you worked your way up to having your own morning or afternoon talk show now on the radio? It's very exciting. I think if you have a goal and you're passionate about something and you pursue it and you work hard and you have some talent and you have some luck 
and uh, there's a little bit of a right place, right time with any situation. I think if you work really hard and you achieve your goals, you should be proud of it because that's something that you've worked and you've attained. And uh, there's a lot of opportunities that can come out of doing hard work and, and really reaching for your goals. So I'm very excited that my career path has kind of led me where it is today. Okay, and now I, I understand you've actually, you've been here in the studio before, so you've done television before. I, I would just want to know, well, what do you prefer more, television versus radio here? I don't know. There's, there's a big differences between it. Television, uh, I guess from a, a public perspective, you have a much bigger opportunity to be a television star. Uh, and, and certainly the career path from radio TV to TV is one that people have done before. Ryan Seacrest, Mm -hmm. is the host of American Idol, and he does the E! Uh, Hollywood carpet, uh, red carpets before the, uh, the Emmys and things like that. But Ryan actually started out in high school do, being a night DJ on a radio station and mastered his craft of radio and actually took that to Los Angeles where he was the afternoon radio show host, kind of like I am, but on a different format station. And from there, his opportunity to move into TV happened and he's just blown up all over the place. Mm -hmm. He's still doing a morning radio show on KISS FM. He actually succeeded Rick Dees, who is another big radio star. Mm -hmm. But for me personally, uh, I really like what I'm doing now. If the TV opportunity came up and someone presented it and it's something that I think would work, I would completely be open to it. But right now, I really enjoy what I'm doing because radio is such a more intimate, one-on-one -on -one relationship with your listener because, again, you know, you can be in several different places yeah. in your life or in location, and yet I'm still talking to you like we're just having a conversation. Yeah. Okay, and now um, we're actually we're going to take a break now, so stay tuned on the A-list, and we'll see you after this. Hi, welcome back to the A-List. I'm here with Drew Walker, and before the break, Drew, we were talking about television versus radio, and you said you would consider going into television if the opportunity presents itself. Mm -hmm. What kind of opportunity would that take? I, well, I think for Chicago, and we were talking during the, during the break, and I think something, how we were talking about a uh, career in radio can lead to a career in TV, mm -hmm. You've heard of YouTube. Yeah. Do you have any videos on YouTube yourself? No, I don't. Okay. Do you, any of your friends ever put anything on YouTube? I'm pretty sure people have. It's uh, a place where amateur people can put videos of any time up on the internet mm -hmm. and the world can see it. And my radio station, US 99.5, mm -hmm. recently released something called All Access, which is our boss decided the program that uh, he decided that, well, why don't we let people see what happens behind the scenes when the microphone goes off. So we actually just posted our first video up, and I guess you could say maybe that's going into television. Uh, but for an opportunity that I would maybe be interested in would be some type of tie-in with uh, maybe a local commentary for a Chicago parade, or if there was a, a weekly segment that had to do with something entertainment-based, say on WGN or Channel 2 or 5 or 7, you know, the morning shows. Yeah. If it was some tie-in where I'm still doing what I'm doing, but hey, we're going to check in with Drew Walker. He does the afternoon show at US 99.5, and he's our guy on the street for this. That's something that I would be interested in doing. Okay. And now uh, you said you started off your, at a small AM station. Well, what was that like for you, just starting off? Well, I think it was really good in a number of reasons or a number of ways. First of all, it was small enough where you can be very hands-on and you see the boss every day and he's showing you how to do things and why you're doing things a certain way. It's also good because on the flip side, if you happen to make a mistake, mm -hmm. uh, it, you're not, it's not being heard by millions of listeners mm -hmm. on a small AM station in a suburban market. There's a much smaller pool of listeners, so it wouldn't be as big of a mistake as if you know, it was prime time morning drive downtown yes. Chicago or downtown Los Angeles. Well, you know, well, what was different? Because you start off small, now you're in a big, big station, yes. US 99.5, big station, yes. you know, everybody hears, you know, I actually heard you yesterday. And it's, so well, well, what's the difference between you start off small, now you're in a big station, millions of people can be listening to you at once. Well, what is that like? Uh, well, I think it's, uh, it's very exciting. 
But in, in starting off small and going big, it, it's with anything. So if you are a, a fan of journalism and you work on the RB newspaper, mm -hmm. and then you go to college and you're a major in journalism, and then you get an internship at a small newspaper, let's say in Aurora, and then your career path takes you to being a columnist or a beat reporter for the Chicago Tribune or Sun-Times, and then fast forward 10 years and you have your own front page, second section column that everybody reads and knows it is yours every day. So it's kind of a career, career progression where you're starting small and you have a passion and you work at it and then you work your way up to the top. It's similar with me where now I'm on the number one country radio station in America. We actually just picked up the Country Music Association Major Market Station of oh, the Year that, Award. That's excellent. Congratulations Thank on that. Thank you. Very excited about that. So we, we just found out that recently and that's an award that recognizes everything that we do at a station. So not only the DJs that you hear on the station, but also our community involvement, our charitable efforts, the concerts that we bring to Chicago and to our listeners. Uh, it, it encompasses everything. The contests, the listeners, the Radiothon for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis. Everything that we do at a radio station, uh, that's what we submitted to the CMA. And, and we won the award, but it was exciting because that really shows that a radio station could be a lot more than just, hey, here comes another 10 songs in a row, or you really begin to establish a personal relationship with your listeners, and they take you as another person in their lives, and a lot of really cool things can happen from that. All right, that's excellent, and now uh, we're, we're gonna take another break now. Um, I'm Matt Minotti here with Drew Walker, and we'll have more after the break. Here with Drew Walker from US 99. Drew, during the break and before we went to break, we were talking about the award US 99.5 mm -hmm. just won, in which it's a phenomenal award. You guys are number one in the country now for country music. Now, did, does it bring? Now, did you work harder now to repeat, or does it? Does it make? Is there a feeling that now you guys got to up the ante a little and take it to the next level, or just keep? doing what you're doing. I think uh, in, the, in the last two years, uh, in the last 18 months, I've come on to the afternoon show and we had a new program director who is in charge of the whole station, he's the boss, and a new music director who is in charge of the music and uh, the, what types of music we play, more new or a little bit of an older. And so we've all come in and we had this big effort and it's very exciting because the Country Music Association, the awards happen in November in Nashville and will be recognized there. But I think there is a certain expectation that we did really, really well last year. And so let's at least do what we did last year and let's bump it up a little bit more. One example is that as we have a, a radiothon every year in December for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis. This is a hospital that takes care of very sick children mm -hmm. and the dollars, it's all run by donations and the dollars that go into the research the research is actually shared with other children's hospitals across America. So Children's Downtown Chicago uses some of the research that the Memphis Hospital has, mm -hmm. uh, has come up with. And so in two days last year, we set the record for the highest donation ever for a St. Jude Radiothon by a radio station. It was $1.3 million in two days of on-air uh, talking about what the kids are doing and talking with families and showing people and telling people how even a dollar a day can make a difference in the life of a child. And so we raised a bunch of money for, with the support of our listeners. And so not only was that fantastic that we did such a high amount, but it also shows that our listeners are really in tune with our station and they want to be a part of it. And that in turn played a big part in winning the award just saying that you know this is a concerted effort, and so obviously our radiothon is coming up in, in December, and we would love to do 1.4 million, 1.5. The opportunities are, are really endless if you if you strive to achieve. And no, I want to talk about your current job at US 99. Um, is that now? We'll, now, when when you come to the office, we'll, what do you actually do? Do you come in you know a half hour before? G give us an idea of how you come in and start your day and okay. start your. Um, radio show. I usually prepare the show in my home office at home and uh, I read several newspapers a day, uh, lots of magazines, uh, always watching TV. Life as a radio host as a between a talk show and a music show, uh, 
my show is about life experiences, so I'm always kind of watching for things that I think can relate to my audience or something that I thought was interesting that I think they might find that as well. So I, I keep notes throughout the day, but I actually get into the office around 2 o'clock. The studios are downtown, and in that hour I might prepare a couple commercials that I need for that day or meet with uh, the program director of anything last minute that's happened that day, a big contest or something that's happened in the world of country music. And then I'm on the air from 3 until 7, and uh, I play a lot of music, and I talk to a lot of people. I answer over 200 phone calls every hour, and some of those are requests for songs. Some of those are people responding to things that we're talking about or wanting to add their opinion. And it, it's the fastest four hours of my day. It goes very, very quickly. And then at 7 o'clock, my show is finished, and uh, I usually wrap up quickly and leave and uh, I, I'm usually out of the station very quickly, but my whole day, uh, I heard a very good example from uh, Eric Ferguson, who hosts the morning show at The Mix once. He mm -hmm. said, most people work 100% uh, eight hours a day from a nine to five. Mm -hmm. With radio, we work about 70% 24 hours a day. So I'm always thinking about things that I can relate and tell stories with my audience that they might be able to relate to. Just like this interview today, I know I'm going to talk about this today because you know, being in the high school and observing some of the kids and things that I see in the newspaper, you know, our listeners have kids, they can relate to it as well and some of the stories will be pretty amusing. Okay, and then how many years have you been in radio? I've been in radio for just about six years. Six years? And then um, you actually came to Chicago. Well, why not another city other than Chicago? I don't know. I've always felt uh, very close to Chicago. I grew up in northwest Indiana, not what we know in Chicagoland mm -hmm. as northwest Indiana, but two hours away, Chicago was it, the big city. That's where everything was happening, and I knew that I, I was just drawn here after college, and it feels more like home than it ever has before. My wife, her family is from Gurney and Grays Lake, and we know that this is where we want to be. And I realize that there's larger radio markets in New York City and Los Angeles, but for me, Chicago is it. This is, this is home for me. Okay, and then you said you like Chicago. Did, did you ever envision yourself going to, you know, a New York or an L.A.? Or you just think that Chicago is where you'd like to stay? It's like a, it's where I'd like to stay. Uh, I hadn't envisioned myself going to other markets. I did a radio show in Milwaukee. And that's, again, a Midwest feel. It's a smaller market than Chicago, but it's still uh, over a million people. And I really enjoy the work that I did there. I love the people that I worked with, the station. But I was very excited to be able to come back to a station here in Chicago and kind of work up from weekends to the show that I'm doing now. Okay, that's great. And um, we're actually we're going to take a break now. So um, we'll, we'll see you after the break. Okay, hi, I'm Matt Minetti. This is the A-List. Um, we're back. I'm here with Drew Walker. And now, Drew, I want to ask you, do, do you see yourself staying on the air as a DJ? Or in the future, do you see yourself maybe moving up to management or even owning your own station? That's a great question. Uh, a lot of people in radio start out as a DJ and then move into management with program director or music director. Uh, I would certainly love the opportunity to learn more about those jobs. Right now, I'm, I'm really happy what I'm doing. Uh, kind of a, a normal career progression or what some people in the radio industry see as a normal progression is, you, you know, you work up from a smaller market to a large market and then from a, a weekend show to a daytime show. The number one listening time in radio is morning drive. Uh, the second is afternoon drive, so I'm in the second most listened to slot right now, and that's really designed around people in their cars. They're driving home, or they're on their way home from school, work, picking up the kids, but the number one listening time is in the morning when you're getting ready for school, getting ready for work, bustling around the house or on the expressways. That's just when the most amount of people are listening in their cars. Uh, in the future, I would love the opportunity if it, if it came up to possibly do a, a morning show or a morning talk show, but right now, what I'm doing is really great because I get to do the best of both worlds. I'm still playing a lot of music in the afternoon, but we're talking about a lot of things and having a lot of conversations and uh, hopefully giving you a little bit of entertainment, making you laugh, mm -hmm. and if you learned one or two things that you didn't know before you listened to my show today, then I think we've had a good show. Okay, and then, um, so do, do you always see yourself on the air or do you maybe want to 
go off the air, be kind of like you said, like the program director, or even taking it to the next level and owning a station mm -hmm. in the future? I don't know if I would want to own a station. I, I think where the radio world is now, most of the radio stations are owned by corporations. Uh, years ago, there were instances where you could purchase a radio station by yourself. Uh, and there's even still a, supple, uh, a couple small cases where very small AM stations are owned by individuals. But I think with media consolidation, you know, CBS Radio, Clear Channel, they're the big ones. There are some other companies, Cumulus and uh, ABC Radio, which just got purchased by another company. So people are still consolidating. I don't think it's, I don't think it's gonna get to a point again where the opportunity for me to own an FM station unless I had millions and millions and millions of dollars. So I'm not interested in that. I like what I'm doing on air. So if I did move in to have the opportunity to be a program director or to be a music director or to get into that type of management, I would still want to keep some type of on-air role just because for me, I really get enjoyment out of that part of my job. Uh, and I don't think I would want to give that up even if I added additional responsibilities. Okay, so you say that you, you pretty much you see yourself on the air pretty much. Yes. Okay, now we're, we're actually we're running out of time. So okay. the last question I want to ask is, well, what would you like to say to any people, any of our viewers out there aspiring to be a radio DJ, to be a program director, a music director? Well, what, would you, what advice would you give them? I would say uh, pick your favorite station and ask questions because people love to share their stories and with someone who has a passion, who has an interest. If you're interested in radio, call your favorite station and say, I would love to learn more about it or how you did it or what I can do to get into this type of career. But more so than anything, especially from my perspective, uh, you don't need schooling for it if you have some talent, if you have a lot of hard work, a lot of passion, a lot of drive, a little bit of luck. And uh, I, I like to think that I am proof that you can follow your dreams, and if you work really hard, I think you can achieve them. So really, never give up on what you really want to do. There is an opportunity if you have uh, enough hard work in there. Okay, and um, we'll start, say one more time so our viewers can listen to you after they've watched this show. When, when are you on? I'm on weekdays between 3 and 7 p.m. on the ride home. That's what the show is called. It's on US 99.5, that's 99.5 FM, and we are America's country station. And, uh, you know, give me a call sometime. Okay, and um, now I, I wanna thank Drew Walker for coming out here, taking time out of his busy schedule to come out here and be on this show. And I'm Matt Minetti, this has been The A-List, and we'll see you next time.